Well, I will call to order this meeting of the Bloomington Commission on Sustainability. This is our September regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and we are at 6.03 p.m. Uh, we have neither a vice chair nor a secretary at the moment, so I would like to ask if anybody would be able to serve as the secretary for the duration of this meeting. Excluding Nolan and Matt, who have already done so for us. So there is another volunteer. <coughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, if you want to, I can call roll because I have it up already. If you would just record the responses. Okay. Uh, Christina Anderson. Present. Matt Austin. Here. Sarah Congress. Caitlin Edwards. Here. Emma Ferguson. Matt Flaherty. Here. Alicia Hardy. Nolan Hendon. Here. Anya Jane. David Maynard. Here. Sean Mia. Nagelo Routsong. And Joseph Winia. Present. So we do have a quorum. Uh, we can proceed to adoption of the agenda, which I will share momentarily. So this is the agenda as it was distributed on Friday, September 9th. Are there any objections to adopting the agenda as distributed and shown on the screen share? All right, seeing none, it is adopted. And I will stop the share so that we can go back to, I suppose there are no members present on Zoom, but the main screen. Um, and that brings us to approval of the meeting minutes. This is for the August 18th regular meeting. Are there any correction to those minutes? All right, seeing none, those are approved as provided. And that will take us right <coughs> to public comment. So each member of the public will be given three minutes to speak. If you are in the room, if you could just approach one of the microphones around the table. And there is presently nobody in Zoom. So is there anybody who would wish to speak? Please. Hi, I'm Rachel Alford. I'm a graduate student at IU studying environmental and occupational health. Um, I'm the president of the Environmental Health Student Society. Um, it's a kind of recently reformed organization as of last spring um, that seeks to kind of connect students to environmental health professionals um, and op give opportunities for um, skills and conversation around environmental health to students. Um, in a pool, pool of my poll of my um, members, which are it's around like 30, 40, um, there is an interest in sustainability. And so I was hoping that y'all would um, either serve as connections for me or um, help me to develop a project that my members could participate in. There is a, it's mainly professional, but there is an interest in service to the community, to Bloomington. Um, and so I would love to work with y'all about um, developing a project or if any of you want to come speak to my organization, that's a lot of what we do. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for your comment. <coughs> Are there any other members from the public who would like to comment? How would we get in touch with you? Uh, that is a great question. I, my email is rachalfo, A-L-F-O at I-U dot E-D-U. Um, my phone number is 281-753-2838. Um, Dave also knows my boss. <laughs> um, so you can reach me through her. Um, but yeah. And what would be an example of a project or something mm -hmm. you've been involved with already so we can have that idea? Perfect. So it's kind of a newly formed mm -hmm. group. Um, so I'm tinkering mm -hmm. with a lot of things. Um, I don't, I'm not fully aware of Bloomington's like what. Yeah, um, 
And so currently we volunteer with Girls Inc. So we'll help them with like, in the spring we'll help them garden and stuff. Um, yeah, we have professionals come in and talk to people, talk to the membership. Um, and so I don't have, I haven't fully developed an idea of a project, okay. but I know there are students that are interested and that would serve as like a hands-on force. Gotcha, so a service project could be working with the, the, the Bloomington Orchard. Yes. That type of yes. thing, so you're wanting to know more of what's out there. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So there's, so you'd rather, there's... You're currently developing projects of your own, but you'd be willing to, to engage in sustainability, in sustainability projects that were already um, in play? Okay. I want to, it's hard as a student to know like what's fully out there all the time, um, especially if it's not advertised for students specifically. Um, so I'm hoping that y'all can serve as like a liaison for me. Yeah. Perfect. Thank y'all. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Can I make a follow-up comment question or is this like not yes. for public comment? Um, yeah, I think, well, that kind of concludes public comments, so we can open it to commissioner questions or comments. <laughs> well, because at one point we had a liaison from the IU Office of Sustainability on this group. Do we still have that position? Yes. As soon as I can find my mouse cursor. Um, yeah, it, the, the title is IU Office of Sustainability, uh, who appoints a seat on the commission. Okay. Is, that, is that position currently filled? It is vacant. vacant. Okay. Yeah, I know we discussed that in the last meeting or meeting mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. because Michaela, who was left that position there, and mm -hmm. I think we're just, we don't know what they're thinking. Okay. Um, and it would take a change of city code to uh, establish that seat as a, a general appointment from the mayor or the council, or to, I think even, I think it's like an ex officio seat, so I'm not even sure it's the office of, or can they actually appoint it, the it's office of sustainability? Going Strictly from the description on the commission's the commission on sustainability's page, it says the seat is appointed by colon IU Office of Sustainability. That's a possibility anyway. It sounds like it. I don't know All right. how well that corresponds to the actual code that I'll defines the back. position, though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be worth verifying. But yeah, that was something I had actually intended to potentially propose during new business at this meeting, since it had come up at our previous meeting. If we're able to get through our currently scheduled business, I think that would be a very interesting conversation and. This could be a potential avenue for connecting to it. So it'd be great if that, once it's filled, that position could help kind of be delays on identifying projects within the city that would be good for student groups to help work on. So or I'm just thinking students have some things that they want to bring. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, okay. agreed. Cool. Just so. thinking out loud. Thank you. <laughs> as, as an additional point to that, there's a, um, they have a banquet in the spring that's open to the public, open to anybody. You just have to reserve a spot, and you'll see lots of students that have projects. Um, and it's really, really interesting um, as to what the students are working on. So if you guys aren't aware of that, um, and it's just a way to, to meet other people. I met a professor that's um, car sequestering carbon at the uh, power plant and turns it into um, a fertilizer. So we're going to try and use that at the farm. But yeah, it's a really good. It's a good so there is a conduit between IU and the city for sustainability, but it's currently open. Yeah. The gap. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any other commissioner comments or questions? Does your I, does your organization work with the IU Office of Sustainability? Um, no, because I was not aware. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that might be a connection. That might be a connection yeah. with NIU that. Could you could make as well? I don't know if we have someone we can give them there's some, this contact. Is very much aligned with something I'm working on presently, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll go with you to, to work it out. But uh, yeah, this, I'm trying to fill that gap. Oh, maybe uh, not through the council um, itself, but through a different program that would actually be run by the students. Oh, awesome. I'm gonna say Stan IU webpage has uh, contact info, including uh, uh, Tangible is one of the folks who's still there and. Might be a Nisa. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that'd be another way to identify their contact info from the website and get in touch. Traditionally, they've had a number of working groups as well, focused on different issues. Uh, I'm not sure if in the staff transitions those are, you know, on hiatus at the moment, but they'd be able to tell you. Also, a point of information: um, yes. it's the director of Indiana University Office of Sustainability or his or her designee shall serve as the ex officio member. So it could be appointed.
much for looking into that. Any other questions or comments? All right, very good. Um, that will conclude our public comment and go on to reports from chair. Um, I will. I would like to report on the Earth Charter Indiana um, Climate Leadership Summit 7 that took place at the end of last week. I did attend that. Um, it was a really good event. It was held in Richmond uh, at the IU East campus. It was held over two days. There were six different sessions, and for most of the sessions, there were three different tracks of content that could be followed. So the one that I uh, want to bring to the commission in the report is the Sustainability Commission Roundtable. So it was just one of the events that was, I believe, two hours long. And uh, there were the hosts were commissioners from the cities of West Lafayette and Richmond. And then there were other attendees in the, in the breakout sessions. And in the one that I attended, there was uh, two non-commissioners, one from Columbus and one from Carmel. And the first thing that I want to note that I thought was valuable that came out of this was the hosts had compiled all of the ordinances for cities that have established sustainability commissions in Indiana. So I thought that would be interesting to be able to compare with, with well, ours was actually included in that, of course, but I thought it'd be interesting to compare ours with the definitions of other cities to see what specifically they're called to do in areas in which ours, because we've, we've touched on in the past how ours lacks specificity and how that can potentially hinder the activity of the commission. And there was also talk from the Novak report about merging the sustainability and environmental commissions. So I added a folder to our current uh, shared drive that is titled Sustainability Commission Ordinances, and it's in the Other Cities Plans folder of our shared drive. So if anyone else is interested in going through, there's only five of them, including ours, so it won't take an awfully long time, but the information is available and potentially of interest. So I wanted to share that. And then for brevity, I also just wanted to mention there were uh, three roundtable questions that were posed during these breakout sessions. I just wanted to read them to you because I thought they were interesting and thought provoking. There was good conversation that surrounded them that I think could be of interest to commissioners. Either we could discuss it offline or make a point to discuss it at some point in the future. But the first one was how do the commissions network and share information? Uh, how can we better network and what are the pros and cons? I thought that was interesting because I had been thinking in total isolation in terms of this body, not with respect to other similar bodies in the state. So I thought that could be interesting for commissioners here to have that sort of perspective as well. Uh, the second was developing and marketing a sustainability commission and why it's important to have one and what you need to develop or maintain a commission with impact. Again, interesting insight that we are already a city with one and there are many in Indiana who are struggling to get one and having difficulty for a variety of reasons. Um, and then the last one was on legislative advocacy. What do these commissions currently do? At what levels? And what should they be doing? Again, and uh, led to more insights in terms of how I've been thinking strictly locally and that we can be operating at uh, larger scales as well, state and federal. So lastly, I'll note that I was uh, quite struck by the presentation from the Environmental Resilience Institute at IU outlining the tools and programs that they've established. Extremely impressive, very informative, very valuable. Uh, Matt may be able to touch on that during the update from Council, who also presented on that content. So I, there was a lot of good things from this uh, event. I was really glad that I attended, only wish that I had gone in person. I was virtual, so it was, it was really good. And again, we can talk about any of these things offline or if you want to schedule any of them as a commission. I think there could be value to that. So that is my report. I do want to check in with Najla, who has since joined online, to see if you have anything to report um, as co-chair. <coughs> Nothing as co-chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So that includes the chair report. Uh, we would normally go on to report from staff liaison. Uh, Lauren is presently absent, so we can save that for a future meeting. Um, the two items that were going to be reported on was the SPIA Sustainability Engagement Fair, which um, Najla could pick up, uh, who was present um, when we get to reports from commissioners. And the other was the Climate Leadership Summit, which is part of why I covered that in the chair report, knowing that Lauren would not be able to provide that information. I'm happy to cover the Sustainability Engagement Fair. Oh, perfect. I attended and That's right. of 
Lawrence. Of course. Um, Forgive me, please. So at that, I mostly introduced to the community the Zero In platform that we've been working on. Um, the launch for that, as a reminder, is the press release should be going out this week. And then Lauren and I will both be at the Blooming Neighborhoods event next Saturday, the 24th, 10 to 12. Um, we'll be tabling for Zero in Bloomington there, um, and that's kind of like our soft launch for the platform out into the community. Um, I know, and I don't know if this is something we would want to talk about right now, but we do want to um, have a discussion with the commission about what your guys' role could look like in helping us with the engagement strategy for Zero in Bloomington. Um, we would like to have you all involved as kind of the people that can be front facing to the community and getting a, a variety of groups engaged. Um, but that was the majority of what I focused on for the sustainability engagement fair and introducing to them. Um, I, yeah, I don't have any really other updates for that. Um, we had a lot of questions about internships and such, but <laughs> um, <laughs> that mostly goes through another the McKinney Climate Fellows that was there, so I just kind of directed people in that direction. But um, yeah, that's kind of an update for that. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any questions on that report? All right. Seeing none, that will bring us to a report from Council Ex Officio. Matt Flaherty, if you would. Yeah. Uh, thanks. A few updates. Uh, one was that since we met last, uh, we had the uh, marathon week of budget hearings at the city, uh, end of August, beginning of September. Uh, I think around 18 hours of meetings in four days, so that's always <laughs> a challenge, but uh, a lot of information and a good opportunity to touch base with all of the department heads, uh, hear what their um, accomplishments were over the last uh, year uh, with respect to their goals and um, also what they're planning for the year ahead. <coughs> uh, this was uh, a budget cycle that included uh, um, uh, plans for the economic development, local income tax, uh, incremental uh, revenue gains that were uh, that will that will start uh, on January one of next year, uh, following that taxes uh, passage earlier this year. Uh, a lot of those were earmarked for sustainability initiatives, um, especially if we're thinking of sustainability broadly. Uh, a lot for transit that they are already leveraging into um, uh, a pretty rapid. Uh, um, uh, taking on of new electric buses, which is uh, great to hear. Um, and then uh, a number of investments through the Climate Action Plan, as well as investments in uh, staff and, and uh, personnel ret retention, um, that sort of thing. So there's probably more that fits in the sustainability category, but that's what comes to mind at the moment. Um, the budget book itself can be a little overwhelming. It's, uh, you know, 400 pages or something, and um, uh, consists of, of a pretty in-depth look at, at the... Uh, the budgets of each department. The presentations, which are also available on, on the, the city's budget website, uh, are a little more manageable. Uh, so it's PowerPoint presentations that we heard during the, the budget hearings. So if you have an interest in a particular uh, but, um, department's budget, you could you could dig into those and see some of the, some highlights again from uh, goals from last year, as well as the up, you know plans for the upcoming year. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything thematically to pull out from council members' response. Uh, responses across the board I don't know uh, I'll just leave it at that <laughs> and and uh, we'll pick that back up uh, later this month uh, with the actual legislation itself the hearings uh, are simply a time to uh, preview what's coming but the actual budget legislation which is uh, three appropriation ordinances and, and three salary ordinances um, comes in, in September October uh, so I think that's it for the budget uh, we can cover questions in a minute though if anybody has any um, wanted to mention uh, I guess the Climate Leadership Summit, uh, which, which Joseph brought up. Uh, so McKaylin was there as well, and I think Lauren attended some of that online. I was there uh, primarily in a professional capacity uh, with my job at, at the Environmental Resilience Institute, but uh, I had the added benefit of getting to attend the uh, Commission, uh, Sustainability Commission Roundtable and things like that, that I think have some crossover with um, my council duties and, and seat on BCOS. That, that I found was really uh, terrific, that, that session actually, and hearing from commissioners around the state uh, I work with a lot of communities around the state and, and in a lot of places that don't have staff support yet, uh, the commissions sort of play that role and uh, have been really um, instrumental in advancing uh, climate initiatives in, in our local governments. And, you know, there's some different uh, unique aspects that they take on. Uh, in Richmond, for instance, uh, you know, a handful of commissioners have been really um, 
instrumental in finding grant funding opportunities and, and programmatic opportunities and highlighting those for staff uh, that they've taken advantage of. Um, found that they also, um, their city council actually refers legislation to commissions sometimes, um, which is interesting. That's not a process we use here in uh, Bloomington. Uh, often staff in the development of legislation will bring um, uh, ordinances to, like through a commission on its way to the council. Uh, that happens a lot in the planning department, for instance, with uh, traffic commission or bicycle pedestrian safety commission. Uh, I don't think it's been as common of a practice uh, here in the economic sustainable development uh, department, but you know, something to think about and consider. Um, so those were some takeaways for me. Uh, as just I've mentioned, I presented on um, various tools and resources available from the Environmental Resilience Institute with a colleague of mine, Danny Schaust, and also had the opportunity to engage in some discussion with uh, folks from around the state and I um, have a presentation from Dr. Aaron DeLott, who's a local um, sustainability uh, scholar and specialist at the O'Neill School, and he's actually finishing up a really cool project of relevance for the commission, uh, which is uh, an in-depth um, uh, assessment and, and use of a survey with, with every Indiana municipality over a population of 1,000, um, looking at uh, their greatest concerns on, on Kind of all issues, um, including various social issues and public safety and things like that, but included in those are various uh, uh, climate change concerns, things like flooding and, and extreme heat. Uh, so he's in the process of wrapping up uh, data analysis from that. It was a good presentation and also highlighting um, how communities are uh, thinking about uh, advancing um, uh, programmatic opportunities that, that respond to these concerns like flooding and, and whatnot. So. Uh, it's a really comprehensive look at the state in a, in a quantitative way that, that probably hasn't been done before. Um, I mean, it hasn't. Uh, so as he uh, has some updates to share, maybe on his website and that sort of thing, uh, it might be something for us to keep an eye out for, and maybe there's some lessons for us. Um, I wanted to mention that the Council's Climate Action and Resilience Committee, uh, which I chair, and which also has Council Members Smith, Rollo, and Piedmont Smith, uh, we'll hopefully be meeting soon and then working on convening some public hearings on the topic of off-road um, uh, gas-powered equipment, in particular uh, lawn mowers and, and gas blowers, uh, string trimmers, that sort of thing. Uh, it is uh, a strategy within our climate action plan, um, one that will require some legislative components, uh, certainly for, um, and programmatic components, to uh, possibly set a, a timeline to phase out uh, use of gas equipment and also to create incentives or disincentives around those uh, to accelerate the transition to electric equipment, uh, both for uh, city government operations as well as uh, the community at large. Um, so that's that's been an ongoing conversation uh, in terms of city government operations for, you know, at least a year or more, and, and we're making some some good strides on that front. Um, and then the other, the other piece of that, the community-wide transition, um, and speaking with the, the mayor and uh, others at the, the city's climate action team meeting last month, um, they would like the, the committee, the council's committee, to kind of take the lead on convening some some sessions to get input from various stakeholders. So certainly residents, uh, you know, will be doing some outreach in that regard, but but uh, folks in the commercial sector as well, so lawn care businesses, uh, possibly um, folks from larger institutions that have a lot of uh, lawn care in, in, in their um, purview, so Indiana University, um, Monroe County uh, School Corporation, uh, uh, perhaps Murder County government and others. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, probably late this year or early next year, we'll have some, some meetings going. I want to have a planning meeting with um, uh, staff first, so the council committee will probably uh, try to meet in the next um, month or so with, with uh, city staff to get that going. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, I have my monthly constituent meeting on uh, Monday. Uh, it's usually on the third Mondays. Uh, that's September 19th at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, Y'all are welcome to attend any time, uh, along with any other members of the public. Um, and uh, that's, uh, you can find the details for that at bloomington.in.gov slash council. Uh, the council calendar is there, has, has links to, to Zoom. And I think that's it, but uh, happy to answer questions if folks have them. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that report? Just a comment. Mm -hmm. In the last year, we've gotten electric blower, weed whacker, and we just got an electric 42-inch uh, deck lawnmower. Mm. Love them, but yeah. you're just going to have to buy a lot of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you've got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, we've, been, we've been very happy with it, but I expect there will be pushback mm -hmm. um, because of those types of issues. But I look forward to yeah, seeing that progress. It's, it's kind of a complicated problem. I, you know, 
and there's both noise and air pollution issues uh, related, you know, and um, including, you know, local air pollution, not just greenhouse gas emissions. And the, the quote unquote bans you see in, in various municipalities are, are not true bans. They tend to be time limitations. They're mm -hmm. often, uh, they restrict uh, gas blowers or blowers over a certain decibel level to certain times a day and times a year so that you don't have what I saw all day outside my office window, which was uh, someone driving a, a gas-powered lawnmower around, holding a gas-powered blower, blowing leaves and grass clippings <laughs> for hours on end. This is uh, just sort of how it goes. Um, so yeah, trying to limit that <laughs> maybe in some regard and providing again, kind of some carrots and sticks perhaps to accelerate that transition. Uh, the, the Climate Action Plan, for instance, calls for working with Duke Energy on possible rebates. They of course stand to benefit from uh, uh, transitions to electric equipment. Um, and tend to have programs to assist on those kind of things, um, at least other types of uh, transitions like that. So yeah, it's an it's interesting and complex Ooh. policy problem. Like a lot of the uh, sort of climate transitions we need to see, there's this government operations component and then the community scale component. And we need to do both, and we need to be thinking about both of them and what is reasonable. Uh, the state of California is kind of leading in this space as well. Yeah. And, and likewise, they're, they're just wrapping their heads around it and, and working on um, banning new sales of, of gas-powered equipment, for instance. We don't have that power uh, as a city, but, um, you know, th they've acknowledged, like I think we, we will be acknowledging, it has to be feasible. It has to be in partnership with folks. Otherwise, it's just going to get uh, probably preempted or slapped down by the state. So <laughs> we need to uh, make sure that it's it's reasonable for folks, but but do what we can to accelerate that, that transition. And anybody that hasn't used electric, they are fantastic. Yeah. They're awesome. You just have to plan accordingly batteries. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, that wraps up our reports. Um, well, it's out of order. I know we had mentioned this at a previous meeting. Reports from commissioners should follow here. I didn't make that correction in the agenda. Uh, if there's no objection, I would like to proceed or to reorder agenda item number 12 to number 10 so we can have reports from commissioners now as well. So seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to reports from commissioners. Um, I think we'll start with working group updates. Um, are there any volunteers from working groups who would like to present an update? Sure. Well, the forest management, uh, we met on Tuesday and we have prioritized our three uh, goals for the end of the year and set um, um, directives as to what we're doing to figure out what the best plan of action is. We're not taking steps to institute any of these ideas, but we're figuring out exactly what we need to do in order to institute the ideas. So we're, um, for example, with uh, the Tetra Packs, which we want to get into the recycling, where uh, I'm contacting uh, the recycling council that deals specifically with that product to see how do they work. Do they work with the city versus do they work directly with the uh, whoever the city contracts with? So we're trying to figure out those steps first before taking any actual action. Um, so we basically prioritize those and we've set each person in the working group with uh, one or two actions before our next meeting. Anything? else on that? That sounds great. Yeah. We just finished our sort of end of 2022 planning in general as well in terms of goalposts for making sure we accomplish these things by our December meeting. So that's it for waste reduction. Um, Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. Please. When you mentioned the Tetra Pax, could you expand on that a little bit? I was curious. So we, we went from what we thought would be the easiest mm -hmm. to the hardest with the compost captains being more, more challenging. Um, and so the idea is we want to start getting those recycled um, because we know a lot of people drink a lot of stuff out of Tetra Packs and I personally hate throwing those things away, but I do. Other people keep them in their garage. Um, and so, yeah, we're just trying to figure out what the whole process is because the city of Bloomington um, contracts that out. We have to figure out whoever they contract with, have they dealt with this in other cities? Are they familiar with it? And then we have to work with the the, uh, the, the, the non-profit, essentially, to figure out do they work with the city or do they work with the contractor or do they work with both? Can we just create that relationship and let it go and kind of manage it from afar? Or how active do we have to be within that to get this move forward? Or is it even possible 
for it to even happen here based on the existing uh, service providers. Thank Did you. I answer that? Yes. I'll just note for those who maybe aren't familiar, Tetra Pak is just a type of layered carton. So they are recyclable. It takes special facilities to recycle them. They're expensive, complex facilities that we do not have one of locally. So for us, they are essentially, for all intents and purposes, not recyclable. There is an organization called the Carton Council, and they advocate for and like try to establish recycling services for that material in different communities. So they have outlined a process for, if you don't have it in your community, get in touch with us, follow this process. That's what we're pursuing. And so, yeah, getting in touch with them, getting in touch with the city, and then figuring out how to get them to work together. Can, you can mail them yourselves to the four recycling centers across the country, but very few people are going to do that. So if you can have that in the existing stream, uh, that would make it much more e much easier for a resident to do that. Thanks. Other questions? What about putting a you know the recycling center down in the south of town? Mm -hmm. Would they have a, a would that be part of having them add a, a that would be, container or something that like that? The idea they currently don't, but yeah nearby people can just take their stuff too instead of it, it wouldn't be cycled out of a normal recycling bin that's to be determined uh, okay. yeah well, that's no, the, during our conversation we kind of touched on that what the recycling center that you described is operated by the South Monroe County Solid Waste Management District completely different entity from the city uh, so we were going to target the city's uh, sanitation services first since we we're with the Commission on sustainability for the city and then see if and how the district can be involved tangentially, but mostly with the city sanitation's waste collection was where we were going to start the process. Okay. So that would be the curbside door-to-door -door for dwellings with four or fewer units, which is what the city services. Okay. Other questions? All right, seeing none, um, Nigel, it looks like, well, are there any other um, just transition working group members who would like to report? I know it's Nagela. If you- I'm the, I'm the only one present I see. You are, okay, that makes it clear. I'd like to report for it. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, how, oh yeah, uh, we met and uh, I also met with uh, council member Flaherty one-on-one uh, -on -one, and we discussed this, uh, our plans for this working group this year. Uh, and, um, He's very supportive of our efforts and planning to um, touch base and advise as we go along and once we start gathering more public feedback. Um, and we're currently uh, at the stage where we have completed our initial round of policy research in the areas that um, were selected by the community at our last event in March and we are um, planning to um, uh, choose the ones that we think might be most impactful so that we can have those um, to kind of offer up as a menu of policy options to the key community stakeholders in these three areas, uh, which we will be meeting with um, in three separate town hall events in the last two weeks of October. So they will be very similar to what we did in March, except for this time, instead of doing it in the library auditorium with where they have a stage, we're doing it in smaller group rooms that are more that are more for facilitated round table type discussions and they also have a better Zoom setup because we want these events to be both in person and virtual so that they're as accessible as possible. And we expect around 20 to 30, um, we're planning for around 20 to 30 key community stakeholders at each event. Um, to basically choose uh, the final recommendations and advise on, on how those might be locally applied in our local context. Um, and so uh, at this stage, the main thing to report is that um, 
the events are planned for October 12th, 20th, and 26th from 5 to 7 in the public library. And if any, any of the other commissioners can attend, that would be most appreciated. And if you could attend um, and help us facilitate the event or help with the research ahead of time or any of the planning or outreach or anything, we uh, would definitely welcome that help. And I think it would also be an opportunity. Um, I mean, basically, if anyone would like to join the working group at this time, it would be much appreciated to have that extra help. Currently, it's me, Alicia, and Jarrett, who's a previous BCOS member who's volunteering to help with this working group. And um, we think we can pull it off, but we would definitely welcome any more hands on deck, especially. Um, anyone who might have great contacts at IU and know who some of the key community stakeholders to invite to, to this, uh, these events would be fantastic. But any, anyone would be welcome. Um, and if you're interested, feel free to shoot me an email after the meeting or let me know now, whatever is best. Um, but we could definitely use some help on that. And uh, I know Lauren's not here now. The main thing we're going to be asking for from Lauren is uh, to do what she did before, which is send the initial outreach email once we give her the email addresses of our stakeholders so that the first email comes from the city. Um, and then we'll be following up. And I also wanted to mention that if any of the other um, commissioners are interested in joining to help with this uh, outreach, it could be a really valuable learning opportunity for other working group, for other commissioner, for other members of other working groups to, um, to, to who might want to possibly do the similar types of public or community outreach in the future in their own issue areas. So that's my pitch for that. It's going well, going on schedule. Um, we did, we did some out, we, uh, we asked ESD, um, I see Alex is here today. Hi, Alex. Sorry, it's just um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we asked ESD for uh, funding uh, to uh, pay a local consultant to help us with this community outreach like we had last spring. And um, they, uh, we, uh, were turned down for that request because of the timing and told that um, funds may possibly be available for something similar next year, uh, but that for this calendar year, the funds were depleted. Um, and so that's why we're going ahead and organizing it all ourselves based on our capacities, knowledge, and experience. But it's going well, and we welcome, um, we, we welcome more people to join if, if they're able and interested. All right. Thank you for that report. Are there any questions, questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Angela. Um, so lastly, we have the heat management working group. I did receive a message from Sean uh, Mia saying that she will not be available to attend, but did provide an update, which I will read to you. Uh, she writes, the following departments and organizations have agreed to join the heat management task force. Monroe County Health Department, two people. Monroe County Emergency Management Department, two people. B City of Bloomington Planning Department, one person. And Red Cross, one person. Sean is waiting to hear from some contacts from IU Health to see if they would like to join the task force. Sean will also be sending an invitation to the task force members to attend a meeting on September 29th at City Hall, where she will give a presentation about all of the components of a heat management plan. The room has been reserved by Lauren Clemens. So I will ask if there are any questions or comments. I will not be able to field them, but Sean or other members of the uh, working group may be able to, um, if they review the recording or if you want to reach out to them separately, that could also be a good alternative. But any comments for the time being? I have a question you could field. All right. Which was, um, what was the second uh, organization you mentioned? Uh, also two people. Excellent. Monroe County Emergency Management Department. Other questions? 
All right. Seeing none, that concludes all of our working group updates and reports. Are there any general commissioner reports aside from those? All right. Seeing none, our reporting session is now complete and we can proceed to, um, I guess what's now agenda item number 10, discussions, not resolutions, starting with, forgive me, I'm looking at the wrong agenda, uh, 2022 annual report review. So we had a version of it provided just prior to our last meeting um, and didn't have the opportunity to review it for the most part. So we've had the time now between and I have that updated version available, which I will share just for reference if you aren't already viewing it. I also want to note, as I believe was mentioned in the meeting announcement message, that I drafted a shortened version alternative um, that I think we could consider as well. So I will share that and then I will turn it over to commissioners for discussion. So here is the annual report version two that was provided since our last meeting. And then there's also the shortened, so I'll do a quick pass by to show sort of the general length and content. So there's a, about a page of intro information, summary, and then it breaks, um, it structures the content into work completed by the commission as a whole, well, into two groups I'll say, completed work and upcoming work, and then those are all split within the committee, the commission as a whole, or the working groups, so in a bulleted sort of format. So the alternative, since this comes in at about six pages, um, I made an alternative that I thought, well, based on a restructuring where the intro is shortened, um, has one page of uh, past achievements, just um, number pointed, and then a third page of objectives not grouped by uh, or not separated under the same hierarchy but just sequentially. So they are still grouped um, for the goals by the working group types since they are organized by working group. But So it comes in at about three and a half pages instead of six. So hopefully everyone's had the chance to review it. I uh, just want to do a quick overview of the differences to uh, see what commissioner thoughts are on moving forward, hopefully with the intent to adopt something at this meeting so that we can actually finally present it to the city. Just a point number four about the, uh, the SDGs. Yes. Of the two uh -huh. better? Thank two, you. just two? Wait, no. Like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, thank you. Any other overall points or thoughts? I think the shortened version looks nice. It's clean and easy to take in. Excellent. It's good to hear coming from a council member in particular who could <laughs> largely be reviewing it. <laughs> Short things are good. Right. Yes. <laughs> Christy. So minor, but the time frame, is this like corresponding to a fiscal year of June to July? Or sorry, July 1 to June 30th, or is it a calendar year? Generally, the reports go by calendar year because we're mid-year and decided to pursue this endeavor. We kind of landed on a end of re remaining of 2022 timeline with the intent to be able to sync up with a full year report for 2023. So. It might just be good to add a footnote somewhere to just say, like, the beginning, because it says at the very, like, top page. Yes, I'll note that. Did I mess it? Oh, yeah. Also like also 22 21, just saying, like, this starts approximately, like, whatever day it ends, like, an end period. Okay. 
Does that make sense? So that if like if in a year and a half or a year from now someone else picks it up, they kind of know like what the start and end date should be. Right. I don't actually know when the last Commission on Sustainability report was, and we essentially picked a rough timeline of activity from the last two-ish years, knowing that there was not a report last year. Um, I do like the idea. I yeah. I don't. I don't, however, know of a great way to specify with greater clarity um, where this starts in time. I think you could, uh, one way to approach that would be to speak to that uh, at, at a presentation during a council meeting and just sort of acknowledge that and explain. Okay. I, if my memory serves, um, Lauren uh, presented updates on, on uh, the commission in, so, in some form or another uh, okay. previously, so she sort of filled that, uh, that role. That might have been unique to 2020 or, you know, and I also could be misremembering. <laughs> but okay. I think that, that happens from, from time to time. But it's always nice to, to hear directly from commissioners uh, in, a, in the form of a report. Okay. We had the Environmental Commission's report maybe uh, a couple months ago. Are those, if I may follow that up with a question, are those reports generally read, read into the record by the commission <clears throat> or just presented just presented um, <coughs> but if you submit the materials to the council office they'll include them in the packet okay. this will be part of the record in that way and um, uh, if you requested of them they're happy to so, well I don't know, sometimes they print them out and leave them on the on dais uh, okay. but yeah usually the presentation is is more of a, a summary of, of the key points and an opportunity for council members to ask any follow-up questions that sort of thing mm-hmm Christy, does that cover sort of the nature of your question or your, your desired outcome? Yeah, I was, I was scanning through the activities and achievements trying to kind of, it almost seems like this is spanning approximately January 1, 2021 to date. And well, I guess including uh, goals for the rest of 2022. Mm -hmm. So that's, the intent is for it to cover all of 2022, including an update of what we've done and what we're going to do. But yes, in terms of activities and achievements, I think that's accurate. Other commissioner thoughts or questions? Make sure I'm not. So for future reports, yes. for example, if we wanted to create a 2023 annual report that would 2023 report would be created in 2023 end date December 31st is that what is kind of on the table right now am I understanding that correctly I think that's a great question I wish Lauren were here to field it um, Matt do you have a general idea of a time at which board and commission reports are submitted uh, I think it's really up to the commission. Uh, it, it varies quite a lot. We've got some commissions, I think like the Commission on, on Aging uh, tends to present near the end of the year, you know, November, December. Uh, we, I just mentioned we heard from the Environmental Commission, I think, a couple months ago. Um, so it's really kind of throughout the year, and, and uh, I don't think there's a, an established pattern <laughs> exactly about when, whether folks update us on an annual basis or not. I think it's always great when they do. Um, uh, the council in particular, uh, you know, the, the staff liaisons come from uh, the mayoral, mayoral administration, the executive branch. So uh, for council members, it's harder to keep track of the 40 uh, some boards and commissions we have at the city. Um, so it's always really good to just capture us at a meeting and, and come uh, say something. So, so I think it's a, a great practice to be in. And I don't think, um, I wouldn't worry about expectations from the council uh, with respect to timelines. I think a, an annual cadence of some kind is probably good. I mean, updating any time, uh, near the end of the year on that total year or in the first few months of the following year, you know, for that previous year, any of that is, is fine. <laughs> I was just going back to city code to see if it's specified in any way, but I don't, I don't think so. Maybe you know that offhand. I was going to propose um, following this meeting, I could review the also BCOS um, bylaws to see if there's anything that mm -hmm. specifies about when a report is provided. I have the general sense that there is 
but of course we get to modify the bylaws as we so choose. So it seems that's a good place to start at least to see if there's an existing specified time and if we like it, we go with it. If not, we can update it. But I do think that sounds very practical to update either near the end of the year, kind of including what we plan to do for the rest of the year or at the very beginning of the next year saying, this is what just happened in the year that passed. This is what we're going to be doing in the year that's coming. Mm -hmm. So for next year, our 2022 past year activities would be very short because only you know a few more months would have passed since we put this together. But in general, I think, yeah. The goal is to pick and get on that rhythm. Please. An update, update from city code. Um, and so this is not what we're doing, but uh, it's what, what's called for, which is uh, for the commission, um, in cooperation with other city boards and commissions, to um, determine Bloomington's current and future sustainability status by developing and monitoring a set of sustainability indicators, and then to provide, in cooperation with other city boards and commissions, an annual sustainability assessment based on said indicators. This assessment shall be included in an annual report and provided to the Common Council, Mayor, and the public. Um, and I am recalling, you know, some some level of conversation around that. This predates, of course, this um, section of code um, predates the Sustainability Action Plan and the Climate Action Plan. I would consider those to be um, uh, indi sustainability indicators that were developed by the Commission and by the City. Um, and those, in particular, Lauren uh, and staff tend to present on. So it's sort of um, supported by the work of the commission among others but it's it, do, it does find its way to us uh, in that way um, so we're not exactly following code there's a lot of things like this in city code for commissions that were established anywhere from 10 to 40 years ago where, where practices sort of slightly deviated over time and a comprehensive cleanup would be a good thing but uh, that's a lot of pretty tedious work and, and specific knowledge uh, to do and and so you know if if at some point we are going to uh, change city code, for instance, by uh, uh, for, for the Commission on Sustainability, um, for instance, with respect to the Sustain IU seat, uh, we should use that as an opportunity to take a comprehensive look at that section of code and, and update some things like this. Thank you for that update from code. I think that does correspond with what I recall Lauren describing about that role in the past and how it functions to date at present. All right. Other commissioner questions or comments? All right. In that case, is there a motion to adopt the annual report as drafted? Are we adopting specific version? So I'll, um, could I, could I, 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 I agree with Christina's uh, suggestion to make it just 2021 to 2022 since it's a, uh, and we could just call it report instead of annual report. <laughs> um, and it's two years. And again, I think this is, the context can be explained in a, in a presentation. Um, so a suggested amendment. I, I mean, I guess we're just, if you're open to the change, uh, Joseph, since you drafted the update, then I think. We're okay. Indeed, I'm fine with drafting it for a visual representation just to uh, compare what, how the proposal looks. Sure. 2021 to 2022 report. Okay. If we need a motion to consider that, I'd be happy to make it, but if, if not... Uh, right. Is there, is there any objection to making the amendment to the date or the, the title of the report? All right. Seeing none. Thank you, Nolan, if you want to or... or I saw your comment on September 9th saying that we needed some content on the city goal alignment section. Is that something that we should try to identify right now and so that we can? Actually, yes. Um, so in particular, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned, I was going to quick note that the one working group contents that I didn't already know the climate action plan or sustainability action plan goals that are correlated to I requested support from who I think will now be Najla as the only um, just transition working group member present but just to be able to define in terms of how the just transitions goals align with the city goals um, 
unfortunately. Nigel, are you still present? I can't seem to see active members while I'm sharing my screen. Or Michaela, if you are able to. Yeah, she's Okay. Yeah, what? There. Sorry, what's the question? Thank you. Um, the specific climate action plan or sustainability action plan goals, if there are any that you already have selected that align with the just transition either global objectives mm -hmm. or specific 2022 end of year objectives for this, uh, just this description in the last paragraph that's shared on screen. Is that, is the, the need oh, yeah. clear? Um, I, yeah, I actually mapped these out uh, already, but I didn't know we were including them in the annual report. I'll be happy to send those to you after the meeting. Okay. Um, do you happen to know any of them off the top of your head for the convenience of being able to? Well, the, since they're different, the climate action plan and the sustainability action plan goals are different. I actually don't know it off the top of my head. And this would just be for the portions that pertain to the, the Just Transition Working Group and not the um, the, the UN SDGs either. Just if, if you okay. happen to know yeah, any I'll of those. Okay, I'll send those to you after the meeting. Okay. So perhaps then we can approve this version pending the addition of the Just Transition Action Plan goals. Does that sound suitable? I wonder Christy? if, um, I'm looking at the Plan. And like in every section, it starts with equity considerations. So I didn't know if instead of like listing specific, um, like numbered goal alignment, kind of yeah. like parenthetical phrase, something like CAP equitable, what was the phrase for them? Equity considerations throughout or something. Certainly. I will I'm provide an example in the text. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to speak on behalf of the Just Transition group if there are specific goals, um, Nigel, that you have that you want to make sure are included. We can be sure to add those. But if you're also open to a more generic statement, kind of like the, the heat management uh, group, it doesn't specify a list of specific goals related to their actions. It's just the group's activity in a general way. Do you have any thoughts on that, Nigel, that you want to Oh, um, yeah, I think that sounds good. And also, um, uh, the, th the policy areas that we're addressing, um, they also include climate and transportation. Like I said, I just, I need to look at them and send it to you. I can't tell you off the top of my head because like I said, they're not exactly the same anyway. So. I'll send it to you after the meeting, but thanks. I'll, in, I'll include that idea, Christy's idea for the equity consideration. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other thoughts or comments or ready for the motion? Nolan, do you still want to make the motion or do you, <laughs> do you want to oh. let another? <coughs> You had started. Uh, yeah, I, so I, I can move. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-22 report. And are we still pending clarification for alignment with city goals from CAP and SAP for just transition? <laughs> Perfect. Second. All right. There is a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Right. Seeing none, we will take a roll call vote as soon as I can see the roll. All right. And is our acting secretary ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Christy? Yay. Matt Austin? Yay. Caitlin? Yes. Uh, Matt Flaherty? Yes. Nolan? Yes. David? Yes. Najla? Yes. And Joseph? Yes. 
All right, that motion passes 8-0. So we have adopted our annual report. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think the next step will be to coordinate our presentation to City Council. Um, are there any thoughts on that process now in terms of those who would be interested or the timing of doing so? I'd run support, but I don't want to leave that. Okay. I would be glad to make the presentation. Um, <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, everyone would be welcome to attend. Not everyone needs to be at the podium presenting necessarily, but um, is there any, are there any thoughts on the meeting, the council meeting at which that should be presented? I don't know that there are any that are more apt or more apropos than others, but I can take a look at the council schedule and... A question for Matt when he gets back. Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah, for me and for you, obviously. Okay. <laughs> right, that, yeah, we'll have to dance around some of those in the coming meetings. And uh, Council Member Flaherty, in terms of uh, the meeting or a, an ideal meeting for making the presentation to ah. Council, are there opportunities that are better than others or anything I should take into account when making the presentation? Uh, I would just um, reach out to the Council office and, and they'll coordinate with Council President Sandberg to find an appropriate time. We try to avoid having too many um, uh, reports from, from uh, the mayor and, and boards and commissions all on the same night because just for scheduling purposes. So that's their purview and they will uh, let you know what's a good fit. It could, it might be, you know, six or eight weeks or something that's possible. But, okay. But yeah, just reach out to them and let you know, let them know you'd like to schedule it and uh, they'll set it up. Perfect. Um, is there a particular email address or contact person for council office? Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> council at bloomington.in.gov, okay. but that's, I should I, verify. Yeah, that's I right. I thought that. Okay. So um, that, and yeah, that'll, that'll work. Perfect. Thank you. I will follow up with that message then, and then <clears throat> report back to you on when that gets scheduled as I find out. All right. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our... 2022, well, our 2021-22 report uh, discussion item. So I will stop that share, pick back up on the agenda, and that brings us to our second discussion on resolution, adopting <coughs> the UN's 17 SDGs, which, Dave, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, uh, I apologize for uh, being absent last meeting when you guys all discussed this. I will go back over the... the um, cat video yes. to, to review just to, to add anything that, that may have come up. Um, but since last time, has anything come up that you'd like to add to the resolution regarding the SDGs? Nothing? Okay. Then I'll move forward with a uh, discussion from last time and, and make sure that they're included in the resolution. Okay. I think what I will try to do in the meantime I'd like to pull up the draft that we were discussing once again. We had brought it up last time. It was in a very draft form, so we didn't go into very thorough discussion. But I think it might be valuable, if you don't mind bearing with me for just a moment, to see if I can locate it. I apologize for not having this prepared. Do you all do? Thank you. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. There, okay. Something like this.
So this is going to be in a plain, plain text form, which I'm editing to make it more readable. Um, and as I recall, at least one point that I thought would be an important point of interest was the description of how the SDGs were to be applied. I think it was this line in particular. Uh, using at least one but no more than three, use the goals as a way to identify the project focus or desired impact or outcome of all BECOS projects. Um, yeah, we, we had a... Go ahead. Can I, that, please? I was just going to say we had a conversation about the, I think, prescriptiveness of how to draft this in terms of how, how much it drives how we make the decisions and what like number of categories we are limited to versus using it as like a general tool. Um, I think it was Matt who had mentioned in particular uh, a, a caution against being too prescriptive with it, but also having value in not applying all goals to everything because of the way that sustainability is such a broad category and many things tend to fall in many groups anyway. That was the intention so, behind it. Okay. Like, that there wouldn't be a slippery slope to try and include everything. Um, you know, if you have 10 out of 17 <laughs> sustainability goals, you might want to break it down into different projects, um, in which case then you can promote one or three primary focuses of that outcome so it doesn't get too, too, too grandiose in, in your planning. So that way, if, yeah, it, it's really to help control scope so that um, for example, if you were doing housing and justice and um, urban farming for um, to, to end hunger, and you're selling those at the same time, it, it's it's a uh, it can get out of hand really quickly. So it's really just okay. if, if there's too much, it, there's an opportunity to look at it to break it down into multiple projects rather than cram everything into one. But. Um, at the same time, yeah, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if it's one, three, or if, it, if appropriate, six, but really just that's to help wrangle in some of the scope creep that will eventually happen. Okay. Are there any? I'll just note I don't really remember what I said and I don't have strong feelings about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I came off as, as uh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in that uh, I, found, I found the SDGs, um, analyzing them very useful, especially comparing them with the city's CAP and SAP goals. And um, I, I mapped out, I found that mapping that I did previously with the Just Transition goals. Um, and it ma I, it's mapped out with um, Climate and transportation are the two from the city of the goals. Those also correspond to SDGs, but also um, the Just Transition Working Group is focused more primarily on SDGs 1 and 10, which are no poverty and equality, which are, um, one, which are ones that are uh, you know, not explicitly mentioned in one of the city's eight goals. So or um, that working group may be uh, working on some of the gaps. Thank you for that. And so I, I think that uh, adding the SDGs in order as another type of framework uh, for us to examine our work and to sort of make sure that we're, you know, covering the important issues like in, in a comprehensive way, but not you know, not letting it mission, go mission creep uh, or scope creep, I guess. I, I think it's a great idea, so I really support this. Thank you, Angela. Caitlin, you're about to start. Yeah, I apologize. I don't know all the history because this is only my second meeting. But um, I have to say, just jumping in, to adopt 17 more goals without the scope mechanism of three being kind of the recommended map, maps, um, I, I don't quite understand 
it, how we will use this as a tool if we eliminate that. I think at the last meeting, my impression was some people were pushing back because they were concerned their work spread over more than just three, and this is very limiting because of the three, but it's limiting so you can use that as a tool, as you said, right. to focus on the scope because otherwise there is no ruler, right? Because you could blow up anything to touch any category because uh, sustainability is just something that touches everything, right? So I would not be inclined to support if we were not gonna also try to stick to this, this measuring tool. If anybody was on the opposite side where they thought three was too limiting, like I'd love to hear, because again, I don't have all the background, so. If I may just clarify, you said you'd be less inclined to support it unless or without sticking to the limit? Yeah. Okay. And the way I interpret that too is that it's a categorizing framework. So it might be that a project could align with more than three, but you pick your three that are like best aligns with to help narrow the scope. That's what I, was I like that. And measure effectiveness, yeah. which is almost even more important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also, I like the idea of using this framework in particular, especially with the conversation around like, oh, like sustainability and the environmental commissions are really similar. They could be potentially combined. And to me, sustainability is like much more, it has a wider, breadth in terms of like economic develop like economic sustainability and social sustainability which I think are captured well within the SDGs so I'm pro any other commissioner thoughts or questions okay I think then let me just check to make sure Angel doesn't have a hand up uh, does Nigel have a hand up? I'm sharing again, so I'm restricted. Uh, maybe I'm not. At any rate, okay, thank you. Um, I think that we can, from that this point, plan to proceed with a draft of a resolution for first reading at our next meeting, at which point we can refine it if needed and have further discussion but I think it sounds pretty clear I also have no no opposition to limiting just wanted to make sure that as a commission we had a, an agreement of the application and consensus on the number if we are going to specify them if we are going to specify a number so see no opposition or further thoughts I think that's a good place to proceed with the resolution Right. So with that, we are complete with our two discussions, not resolutions for this meeting. We have no resolutions for first or second reading. That would bring us to new business. Uh, are there any business items not previously on the agenda that any commissioners would like to discuss? Seeing none, I would like to please. Yes, All right, go. I'm just going to wait for someone else to talk. Um, <laughs> so, again, second meeting. Uh, so, I don't really know. This is more of a question, I guess, to the other commissioners. I don't know if this would be the appropriate um, platform. But, uh, of course, I think water is on everybody's mind, especially with the recent taste, smell concerns with Bloomington's water. Um, not to mention Mississippi and Jackson having really no accessible drinking water. Um, so I know there's not currently a kind of a focus around this, but the algae bloom issue with cities, the city's water is kind of an annual thing. So I was wondering if there's a space there the commission could start maybe bringing some more resources to people as far as sustainability, um, and as it impacts the individual. I know my grandmother is terminally ill with cancer right now, and she's sending me to Kroger to buy bottled water so that her she can actually you know, have her protein shakes and stuff that she needs to maintain her quality of life, which now the taste is so severely impacted by you know, the water, right? And then I go to Kroger and they're completely sold out of single-use plastic bottles, and as a commissioner on sustainability, I'm like, 
Ooh, you know, <laughs> so clearly there's a lot of folks that, you know, for their health and their personal, their personal health still need to be consuming water, um, but the aesthetic of this water is highly impacting them. So even like a list of recommended filters from our water treatment experts, like to disperse that information. Um, I know Herald Times had a write-up about how you could pay to have your water reverse osmosis at Blooming Foods, but maybe there's some other just resources we could share. Um, I know that if you like, I can drink the water if it's from a bottle full station, but out of my tap, I'm like, Ooh, I don't even know if I wanna make pasta with it right now because the flavor is just being impacted. So, and as someone who's a townie and has lived here for a long time, I, I feel like this year's been kind of especially bad as well. So, any, I guess, opinions there? Of course, this is an issue that's kind of a little bit in the rear view, so it would be more game planning for next year. Um, but if there's any other kind of uh, municipal service concerns that overlap or communication concerns or even just messaging around sustainability for the individual and households. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if there's ever been any commission work there, if that's something we're interested in. A lot of what I see in the annual report, it seemed kind of like long-term goals. Maybe this is more intermediate because it's addressing things as they're happening or, or trying to. So. Yeah, <laughs> there's some new business <laughs> for you. <laughs> Are there any particular commissioner responses? Um, the, the most cost effective that I've seen, and I'm lucky to have filtered water at the sink, is just lemon or lime or cucumbers or other into a pitcher with the water to overtake <clears throat> the taste. Not everybody can go buy tons of water or, or um, whatnot. So that's the, the simplest, but. I hate the algae blooms with a passion <laughs> for many other reasons. And I think even explaining, I know that there's been clear like public newspaper articles, things like that, but again, when you look at other cities that are kind of in more mainstream media, like Flint, Michigan, or Jackson, Mississippi, they're dealing with unsafe water issues, and you know, a citizen who might not have the educational resources around water safety when things smell a little bit strange, they're not exactly what you're used to, I think that that can breed some sort of questions and concerns. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for the yeah. cucumber yeah. advice. Yeah, that, that I would put a cucumber in Lake Monroe water. I think it still tastes like Lake Monroe and, water. And but supposedly, <laughs> supposedly you can boil the uh, boil, boil it away. And you won't have that, that smell any longer. So, which is not convenient, but Sure, sure. But even do. something as like sustainable filter, like filter systems, yeah, that would be an at cost to the citizen, but just distributing that information as this right. is, might be a way, you or, know. Or maybe there's some sort of grant that the city could get, knowing that it happens every single year, so they could do a, re a reduced cost filter purchasing, kind of like they did, they've done with the compost bins and whatnot, because um, we know it's going to happen every year. I mean, and my nephew was going to have his bar mitzvah party out on the lake. Uh, four years ago and we couldn't have it because it was actually dangerous for mm -hmm. kids to be in the water um, with the algae blooms. So we had to cancel that. So it's also a danger for people that are, uh, children that are going onto the water at the lake. Mm -hmm. But that all goes back to uh, agriculture and flooding and the fact that we're putting crap into our soil that's yeah. killing all the microbes, et cetera, et cetera. So, sure. um, but luckily we also have groups that are monitoring the water at the lake. Yeah. And, trying to do what they can to protect that but it really comes to the agriculture and, and fixing them and them going regenerative to stop putting all the crap on our soil that ends up into the lake causing the algae blooms. Yeah I guess to touch on your specific question about if there's been work done in this body in the past none to my knowledge at least in the last two years I don't believe there's any record of any in the shared drive so I can't say that there's an established foundation on which you continue you can continue I will say that if you wanted to start an initiative, that could be an option. If you wanted to maybe check in, if any other commissioners wanted to respond with you, to you, to potentially work with you on that to generate those resources, that could be a service that the commission provides. Um, I think Matt brings up some really good points that it, it, there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. I mean, do you solve the problem? Like you said, do we, do we advocate for 
agriculture reform, like the, th the things that are provoking the issue? Um, do we advocate for non-consumption based solutions like using other fruits and vegetables rather than purchasing? I think there's a lot of different ways that can be gone with it. And I think it would be a function of you, if you lead it, and who you would like to work with and how you would like to compile that information. So I, I think it's a very good question, and I think it's a very broad range to go with, but that, yeah, you could definitely pursue just knowing that there isn't a foundation upon which the commission has already worked to establish that. Does that cover the questions that you I had think wanted so, to know? Yeah. Okay. And I, my question actually is really Ooh. kind of knocking at an issue that's a little bit, I think, bigger and something that maybe is more of like a pet project, but sustainability for like the average citizen. You're, you, may, you may take great pride in your sustainable household with your rain barrel, then all of a sudden, you know, your children and no one in your household can drink the tap water, so you're going to buy a whole, you know, crate of Dasani. <laughs> and because, you know, you, you, maybe you, you do want some other options about fruits and things you can add to your water or what, what you can do there. Um, so. So yes, it's not addressing, I guess, the cause because that's a much better issue, but it's addressing something because it's giving maybe the individual some tools to the immediate need. exactly address the immediate need. Sometimes you do have to put a Band-Aid on things a little bit and not just say, oh, well, we'll deal with that, Ooh. you know, that really the, the, the wound isn't the issue, it's what caused the wound, but the wound is still there, so I don't know. So, And if there's anything else that's kind of like, coming from the city that's really impacting, you know, at the household level, water, the water issue right now is just like a really great example and obvious and happening right now. So, but, but yeah. I can speak a little bit. Um, I'll preface it by saying I do work for the water utility. <laughs> so I'm not speaking for them by any means. Uh, but a project like that, I mean, we do obviously have a lot of communication issues that need to be addressed with that. I and mean, we do have water quality coordinator um, so if something like that is formed within the commission, I would definitely promote working with those people and the utility to, uh, to what you are speaking of. You know, it sounds like you're trying to just reach out to the community and the individuals, <coughs> and I'm sure any help with these kind of issues would be appreciated as long as, you know, they're the same, similar messages going out um, would be important to, to align um, with that. Um, but yeah. As you know, as we certainly know at the office, <laughs> we get, awesome. get a lot of feedback from the community. So probably any avenue to help get the message out would be helpful. Do we know too, like kind of, I know this isn't addressing the current wound, but um, future years, I had heard that there was a new filtration system coming down the, pardon the pun, pun pipeline. Mm -hmm. And um, it was scheduled for 2023. Is that Anybody know if that's true or have scheduled? Do you know? A new household filtration system? No, like for the city. Oh. Like at Lake sorry. Monroe. Yeah. Um, again, I, I won't act like I know anything <laughs> officially. <laughs> um, but I know we've added some uh, treatment processes at the, at the intake at the mm -hmm. plant. Um, and some we that's yeah we're we're looking at things not just for safety but for taste and other issues. Um, what, was there anything in the budget that would indicate something was in the yeah. pipeline? Or um, county thing. Is that county or yeah, city? Yeah, city limited utilities. I, I will just say, Vic Kelson, the director, is very proactive on on kind of all those fronts. I've toured the water plant down there, and um, actually, I did want to mention that Friends of Lake Monroe, which is one of the folks dealing with the watershed management and and kind of these more puns upstream issues. Um, our, our, uh, they actually have a, a, they delivered their annual report to the council a week ago and have some events on Sunday this week. Uh, so there's actually a water treatment tour, uh, <laughs> uh, or tours between 10 and 3, I think, on Sunday. Um, when they spoke with us, they were pending uh, finalization with, with CBU, but I, I assume since it's on their website that hopefully that's sorted out. Uh, so that'd be an opportunity. I mean, you could ask detailed questions, actually, about taste and odor. Um, and I know it's very much on their radar and, and something that they are exploring options to address um, in, in this, this term. I mean, they've been very proactive on a lot of fronts with respect to, um, you know, upgrading systems and, and getting us in a really good spot um, as a utility overall. So I'm sure they're thinking about it and working on it to the extent that they can. Uh, I'm, I'm not recalling specific initiatives like related to like a new filtration system, for instance, but a water tour would be a great place to, to ask that question and they should be able to answer it. Um, 
we could also invite uh, Director Kelson or, or someone else from uh, utilities to, to come to a future commission meeting and speak to the issue if we are interested in that. That's something we've done in the past uh, with other, uh, with John Zodi, uh, Director of uh, Housing and Neighborhood Development, for instance, so another option. But. I can also add, having toured the water treatment plant, that active carbon was added, I think only two or three years ago, particularly to address this issue. Mm -hmm. So it's already been. So yeah, we used to actually, it was like an annual thing, and maybe part of the reason people notice it so much this year is because it was addressed the past couple of years. It hasn't been as much an issue as it used to be every year. Um, and this year, again, um, I won't speak to what actually happened, but there's been issues that made this an issue again this year. So it kind of came back out of nowhere. Gotcha. So. facts um, it's unreal how much water is used to make electricity so if you're not aware with nuclear coal gas all that stuff you know you burn your source you create your your heat you pass water over that that turns to steam so we need to protect our water by doing more renewable energy because that doesn't use water granted there are negatives with building the renewable energy but it doesn't use water to create the electricity so that's one thing and then there's um, when you're talking about protecting your water source, there's a, a company called Source, and they um, use solar panels. They pull moisture out of the air, and it filters it directly on site, so it's not connected to city water or anything like that. That might be something that the city could look at um, installing around. Um, it doesn't produce a ton of water, but it produces clean that is not affected by any um, pollution or algae blooms, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really cool, cool product. Mm -hmm. We are within a couple of minutes of our scheduled end time. Just for reference, are there any other um, thoughts on the topic? Not on water, but I do have one more quick message. Please. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned earlier, um, I don't know who all was here for Lauren discussing Zero in Bloomington. Um, that's the site, the community engagement platform. Um, that we're going to be launching and that we've been building out over the past couple months. I know she did mention to me that she had Patrick uh, give a tutorial or a site walkthrough for some people here. Um, I don't know who all is registered, but like I mentioned earlier, we are at a point to officially kind of launch that out into the community. That's been a lot of the work that I've been doing over the last three months that I've been here. Um, I've been putting in resources for all of the actions. And so basically for anybody that's not aware, this uh, engagement platform is going to be um, a site for households uh, that are specifically residents of Bloomington can register their households. Uh, you get an energy profile for your house based on a questionnaire or a profile that you fill out, and then you start taking sustainable actions. The site has seven action categories, over 100 actions between those, um, to give people a better idea of how, thank you, how they can start taking sustainable action at the household and individual level. Um, all of the actions have resources that I've worked on putting in there, whether that be how it aligns to Bloomington's Climate Action Plan, um, local, state, federal, national utility grants, rebates, programs, tax credits, et cetera, to make all these actions a little bit more feasible. Um, right now, we have the goal set to 250 households, but within six months, we're hoping to hit 500 households. And so right now where we're at is kind of strategizing our engagement plan, um, community groups that we can get involved with, and ideally maximizing how we use our, our capacity so that you know Lauren and I can focus on new program launches in the coming year and kind of using our interns, the commission, community groups to kind of push this out into the community. Um, so for the interest of time, I'm not going to go through kind of everything with the site, but if anybody's not already registered and would like to be of great help for us, Zero in Bloomington, you register your household, you complete an energy profile that basically just asks you about your waste, your transportation, your energy consumption, energy sources based on your appliances, etc. Um, if anybody would be willing to look through the site, look through the actions, the resources, and maybe start to think so that we can talk um, at the next commission meeting about any ways that commission members or working groups could be involved in community outreach with this. Um, a lot of the actions do relate to working group topics, so uh, the whole, there's an entire category on eat green waste less that would deal with waste management. Obviously, um, heat management is going to be in the resilience category, dealing with heat preparedness. 
Um, so anything that comes to mind as anybody explores the site uh, for ways for any of you guys to be involved that you might like to be involved in helping us push this out into the community, uh, we would like to kind of explore those opportunities in the coming meetings as we kind of push this out into the community. So just wanted to make that announcement. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah. Final questions or comments on that? I do want to say thank you for putting that together. Yes. I'm excited for it to be launching, excited to sign up and see what it looks like, and to see how the Waste Reduction Working Group can help push that into the society, into the community. I think it's a really good thing that I know Lauren's touched on before in the past about a service that the commission can fill is just being that bridge and that network yes. in the, into the community. Yes, so this absolutely. is a really easy tool for us to, that already exists for us to use and just spread so we don't have to make it. We just have to spread it. So yes. thank you. All right, that brings us to the end of our scheduled meeting. Uh, if there is no objection, our meeting will be adjourned. And seeing none, we are so adjourned. Thank you everybody so much.